Okay, very good evening to everyone. Welcome to the first live session of this course. Yeah, so kindly confirm that you are able to see the video, the presentation, sorry. So, Namanuddin, can you please confirm that the presentation is visible? Okay, great. So, let's start. So, welcome to the first uh, live interactive session for the course on lighter than air systems. The agenda points for today's interaction session are as follows. I will start off by taking a few questions from the Excel sheet, which has been shared with us. There are just two or three questions. Then I will talk about an interesting event related to lighter than air systems, which is uh, being planned. I'm sure many of you already know about it because we have shared the information about it on various channels. But still, I thought today I will take up this for a few minutes. After that, we will open the floor for any feedback, suggestions, or even some complaints. I'll talk about the discussion forum and its importance as a tool for learning. And finally, I will open up the floor for any queries that you may have. Let's start by looking at few questions which have come from the Excel sheet. The first question has come from a faculty member from Karunia Institute of Technology and Sciences in Coimbatore. It's a positive feedback and uh, he is saying that it will be much useful if uh, I could visit their university. This is by Bijulin Griti. So Bijulin Griti, I'll be very happy to visit. I actually travel all over the country to visit various institutes who invite me for uh, sessions, either on LTA systems or aircraft design or optimization or air transportation and the latest area in which I am trying to now acquire some knowledge is sustainable aviation. So tomorrow, for example, we have examinations, uh, mid-semester examinations in IIT Bombay for a week. So I plan to travel to one institute and spend there three days. This institute is uh, called Anna Sahib Nange College of Engineering. So. On Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I'll be interacting with the faculty and the students. I'll be conducting sessions, workshops, etc. And then uh, when I come back, I again, I'm going to visit a college near Mumbai in a place called New Panvel, called as uh, Anjumana Islam Kasko Technical Complex. One of my ex lab, lab intern or lab uh, you know, student has uh, become a member of faculty there and he is inviting me to his college for a session with the students. After that, I'll be visiting a school in Mumbai to talk <coughs> to the children. Uh, so I keep visiting. So you are most welcome to coordinate with me and uh, fix up a common slot in which I could conduct online sessions or offline sessions. I actually prefer offline sessions because that allows me to meet people in person rather than meeting like this across the computer. 
this is very very impersonal for example i cannot see anybody right now i am just talking to a screen i don't know if people behind are able to listen to me or not i only get some simple feedback from the chat window uh, thanks to my teaching assistant nomanuddin who is here but uh, it's very impersonal and i don't see much benefit there is benefit but definitely nothing compared to a personal face to face visit where the students can interact so in short visibility definitely i'll be happy for your information i have actually visited many institutes in coimbatore i have gone to park college of engineering many years ago with my team of students we in fact even flew an airship in the in the ground of uh, park college of engineering they have they had a technical festival called park vaimanik darshan so our airship was flown in that particular event i have also been to amrita university amrita vishwavidyapeetham in etimadai so there also there have been many interaction sessions they have also built one uh, they try to build an aerostat system with my support similarly i have been to kit i have also been to uh, many many institutes in coimbatore i have been whoever invites me i definitely go there okay moving on to the next question the next question is uh what is the practical application of lidar than air system which can bring about a change in the mode of transport this is uh, followed by can this replace the metro and the interstate bus if yes then how this is by rohan so rohan it's an excellent question and this is exactly the basic purpose of looking at the design and development of lta systems you see if you look at the modes of transport available to us the most cost effective mode of transport especially for transporting cargo is the ship nothing today can beat the cost per ton per kilometer of transporting freight using a ship but you know ships require ports and the they are slow so they take several hours still huge percentage of the freight uh, transport in the world happens through ships because they are very cost effective they can take very bulky and large cargo and uh, you know there are container there are ships with 500 containers which 1000 containers and there are super tankers which carry large amount of fuel to crude oil etc so if you want to accelerate the delivery of goods over long distances the other modes are either you can use a train or you can use an aircraft now aircraft are the fastest but they are definitely the most expensive ones so there is a sweet spot between the aircraft the train and the ship where the lta systems can fit in if i had uh, actually received this uh, information much earlier i would have actually shown you some slides to explain this unfortunately i don't have it so maybe uh, in the next interaction session i would try to talk more about it but on the discussion forum i will request the teaching assistant to share some information which i will share with him so the answer is yes lidar than air systems can definitely bring about a major change in the mode of transport because number 1 they do not require any infrastructure except at the start and the destination both at the origin and destination if you use large airships you definitely need to provide a large hangar and also some support infrastructure to operate the airship but in between nothing is required unlike a train or a road in which a lot of uh, expenditure is to be made you know for example india is going on a massive infrastructure drive we are building huge amount of roads uh, many of these also become an ecological disaster especially in the hilly areas there is an attempt to build a four lane or a larger uh, capacity road right up to badrinath but the mountains are not able to take that load so we are seeing lots of problems airships are the system that can replace the road and the rail transport but they are economical and affordable only when they are large in size if you want to replace a 1 ton or a 2 ton truck with an airship 
it does not make a good business sense but if you want to transport 100 tons or 150 tons then airships become a very very promising candidate because the costs are then divided over a large amount so all over the world there is a huge a pro, a huge uh, push now towards what is called as cargo airships we also have a phd student working with us on the design of cargo airships before that there was another phd student who recently graduated he looked at the possibility of using what is called as hybrid airships for transportation of cargo so airships can replace metro and interstate bus but only for large volume oversized cargo not for passengers for passengers airship cannot be recommended as a mode of transport unless journey itself is the pleasure because the LTF systems as you know are very much reliable unreliable because of the weather conditions cargo does not have any emotions and cargo does not mind waiting for some more time but passengers are very time critical and therefore you know if you if you cancel a flight because of bad weather they become very upset and if it is unreliable if the dispatch reliability of a transport system is poor then people will not prefer it because they are not sure they will go all the way to the uh, you know to the airport or to the location where the airships are operating and then it will be cancelled it happened with me also there are three or four occasions when i wanted to take up a flight of an airship just for my own expand, uh, adventure but every time i went it got cancelled so i have not, never been able to actually fly on a large airship as a passenger i have tried three times all the three times because of my bad luck the weather was uh, bad so to answer your question in a, a single line it is possible but not for transporting passengers for transporting large sized and huge amount of cargo moving ahead the next question from the excel sheet is uh, what are the job opportunities in this field after completion of this course and there is a second question how is nuclear and radiochemistry related with LTS systems this question comes from prachi mother who is uh, associating with us over in many many activities so let me answer these questions uh, job opportunities definitely exist because there is a requirement in near future for a transportation system that is less <coughs> sorry less carbon intensive green transportation system and which can, can uh, which can decongest the roads and the rail networks or the air networks so once the systems come into being definitely there will be requirement for jobs for people to operate them to maintain them to design them to fabricate them etc also there is a huge job opportunity available in the drone sector or in the unmanned airship sector if we can develop autonomous airships that can carry uh, even small amounts of payloads from with precision with accuracy uh, we could be able to uh, use it to meet some special requirements so job opportunities are definitely there moreover i don't think you should take up this course basically for seeing whether it gives you a job or not i think now the young generation should start thinking of becoming job providers and not job seekers so if you learn about lts systems you might be able to develop hybrid or unique solutions and start a company and provide opportunities to other people explore new areas through startups and uh, maybe propose ideas to existing companies to look at LTA system seriously coming to the next part of the question about nuclear and radio chemistry nuclear power can be used on LTA systems to power the engine for long duration applications because as you know there are safety issues there are questions regarding how uh, you know how much can we rely on a nuclear power plant but they are very lightweight for the amount of power they produce they have much lower weight and the cost is the fuel cost is almost negligible because very little amount of fuel is consumed for very long distances 
radio chemistry i am not sure if there is any application i really don't uh, know about this so i am not able to answer this question right now perhaps if i come across some information i will be able to throw some more light maybe you should ask this question to chat gpt and you will get a much more you know interesting answer uh, compared to Prachi has a question on the chat window. When uh, when you say large oversized cargo, what is the volume or weight? So Prachi, it is both. Look at, for example, the case of transporting large turbine blades of windmills in remote areas. Today we use them. We use we transport them using these oversized vehicles with 30, 40, 50, 100 wheels. They block the highways and they block the roads. They take a lot of time to travel. So if it is an oversized cargo, you could actually take an LTS system uh, to deliver in situ at the place. So from the place that you fabricate them, they could be transported directly to the place where they have to be deployed. That is meant by oversized cargo. And of course, the, the weight also, you know, when I say large cargo, I actually mean heavy and weight. Okay, and Naman has given some very interesting points in the chat. He says that if you can give the queries in advance, it will give us time to prepare for your questions. See, unfortunately, I got these questions only yesterday, and I did not have time between yesterday and today to put together a presentation to answer your question. This presentation has been put together by Noman, the teaching assistant. He is currently having some examinations in his college, so he also is a little bit hard pressed about time, but still, he is online. And he has made this presentation for you. So if I get the questions in advance, uh, it will be easier for us. And plus, as I will talk to you in the end, there is another facility available, which is the discussion forum, which I am told people are not using that much. Now I move on to the next question, which is emergency rapid deflation device. And this is being, uh, this is being uh, conducted as a competition. So first of all, let me talk to you about what is meant by this device and why is it needed. So here is the motivation for the device. Uh, can someone type on the chat window and tell me what do they see on the screen? What do you think this is? Yes, anyone can just type and tell you what do they see on the screen. <clears throat> so Akhileshwar Munshi is saying that this is an airship system in the desert. The answer is wrong. This is not an airship. I wish uh, I would have got the correct answer. Uh, Yasha Sudarshan says it is an aerostat. Yes, it is an aerostat system. So this is an aerostat system. Uh, Vinish Tachophobia, that Tachophobia seems to be a code name. Vinish, uh, I think the spelling is wrong. It is not aero. Aerost state, but it is A E R O S T A T. Correct. So now this is an aerostat system which is deployed in some area. And now let us see what happens. There is heavy wind, as you can see, the leaves are oh my god. And what has happened now? Vidushi Mittal, you are correct, it is an aerostat in a desert to do surveillance. But what happened to the aerostat? What happened to the aerostat? Vidushi has typed 
the tether broke no not tether it is tether t e t h e r yeah because of disturbing winds the tether has broken right it has broken akhileshwar munshi correct in the devil storm its tether has broken so now such an aerostat is called as a break away aerostat okay <clears throat> or a fly away aerostat correct yashak sudarshan you are right it is detached from the tether because tether has broken now in this case it has been broken because of load acting on the tether and maybe it became weak with a function of time so it broke from the middle but it can break from anywhere so the tether breakage results in a breakaway or a flyaway aerostat and this could be accidental as you saw in this particular example or it could also be intentional yes okay make sure you are right we have lost the aerostat eventually because the balloon has gone away now aerostat is okay is a balloon but more expensive item on the aerostat is the payload the equipment that you put on the aerostat maybe the surveillance camera maybe some communication device any other device any sensor that you put on the aerostat it could be a wind velocity measurement system whatever it may be whatever you mount on the aerostat as a payload that is lost because it will fly away first it will go up because there will be some net static lift acting on it because buoyancy will be always more than the weight because we want it to remain tight in the air and then we have lost it now accidental i understand but what about intentional so whenever you do add any activity like this there are always some people some miscreants who might not be very happy with what you are doing there could be some people who are not interested that you have a system like this so they may actually go and cut the tether it is possible to cut the tether because you, you just need a knife or some other device so when you deploy the aerostat in a remote location you may not be doing 24/7 uh, you know guard there may not be 24/7 guard on the aerostat system so what will happen is either accidentally or intentional the tether can break and then breakage will lead to a fly away aerostat so what will happen is there will be serious risk to the air traffic because this aerostat is now an uncontrolled balloon just like the chinese balloon that was shot down in the us on 4th of february it will be a serious risk to the air traffic it may cause third party damage or injury because once once it goes up to some altitude the envelope will tear because of the pressure difference because the pressure outside will keep on reducing as you go up and the pressure inside will remain the same a time will come when the delta p between inside pressure and outside pressure will become so much that the envelope material cannot take it envelope will tear when the envelope tears the whole thing will start falling down almost like a stone and then the heavy payload could injure and damage a third party so my law whenever you deploy an aerostat system or any lta system for that matter by law you actually require an emergency rapid deflation device it is a legal requirement now many a times we see a spherical balloon being launched by some uh, people who want to do publicity or they want to do some advertisement generally you see it in maybe some real estate project or you see it at so i recently i went to dehradun and i had gone for a science uh, <clears throat> congress i went for the 17th uttarakhand science congress and there also there was one uh, balloon deployed over a building but legally speaking you need to have some kind of a device mounted on it so that in case it breaks away for whatever reason it should not cause third party damage so this particular device should be such that it brings down the aerostat in a controlled manner okay and the best way of doing that is to deflate the lta gas so vidushu has a very good question vidushi has a question it says will it be make sense to use an airship in a place where traffic is a big issue for passengers example bengaluru vidushi bengaluru is a very very excellent use case for airships because of the huge traffic jam on the roads bengaluru to the best of my knowledge is the only place in the world where i have seen the usage of traffic lights on a high, on a flyover okay so much is the traffic in bengaluru on the roads 
that there are <laughs> there are traffic lights on a flyover also. <laughs> so it's an excellent use case. However, we have to keep in mind that we have to operate airships in a place like Bangalore, keeping in mind the presence of the airport at Kempegowda International Airport. Okay. So <clears throat> we cannot simply just start doing things without taking into consideration the air routes and the tra air traffic. So we have to work in conjunction with the Airport Authority of India, which manages the air traffic. But it is very much possible, according to me, to use airships to transport uh, freight and cargo inside Bangalore city from some. Uh... So a one example would be uh, Amazon and other uh, and Flipkart as well. They have huge warehouses and uh, they are currently using road transport to transport their items to various places. Uh, there could be a possibility of transporting large equipment or large boxes from one warehouse to the other or from warehouse to a city center and then it can be released for. We are also working on that problem through a PhD student on how to optimally use airships for large volume packet dispersal. Okay, so our concept is very interesting. We are looking at a combination of uh, quadcopter drones for the last mile solution and airship for uh, the <clears throat> for the long distance transportation. So coming back to ERDD, Vidushi, I'm very happy that you are asking these questions because it shows that the participants online are thinking and they are uh, you know involving themselves. So it makes me happy when I see such questions. Please keep, please continue interacting like this. We have another half an hour approximately. Uh, let me finish first and then I will be opening in the floor for interaction. So the best way to uh, bring the aerostat system down after there is a breakaway of tether is to deflate the LTA gas. Now, one can do this by damaging the umbrella permanently like we used to do earlier in our laboratory. Whenever we made aerostats in the past, we used to put one electrical cable with a battery on the top of the aerostat embedded in the envelope. And when we <clears throat> realized that it was going out of control, whether it is airship or aerostat for outdoor flights, we would remotely trigger the current in that cable, Nikron wire, and that wire will heat up, it will melt the envelope and make a circular or a elliptical hole or a flap type hole. But with that, what happens is that the envelope gets damaged. So now we have to patch up the envelope before we use it again. And also, once you cut the envelope, there is uh, no control on the gas deflation. It will continue to deflate. And then when you deflate continuously without any control, a time will come when it will come down very heavy like a stone. So there is a very good chance that the payload will break because of the high impact. What we would like to do ideally is to have a controlled descent. That means we want to release some gas and then again block it so that it can it, it can start sinking slowly then again we would like to uh, you know so like that we would like to we would like to have a system where we can uh, <clears throat> continuously control the descent so that is what we are planning to uh, take up in this competition okay so now you got the idea about the reason for this uh, now what i am telling you is not just my imagination there have been many, many accidents in the past. For example, there was an accident in 2011 uh, in uh, Lyas in Puerto Rico. Okay, there was a heavy wind with thunderstorm, which led to the snapping of the tether. The aerostate uh, rose from the ground altitude to 140 meters and then ruptured. And it led to the loss of 8 million US dollars. Okay. Uh, then, in the next year, 2012, there was another accident of the tethered aerostat system in Marfa in Texas in USA. Again, there was a bad weather warning. And uh, after the investigation, it was found out that uh, the operating agency should have taken care of the warning and brought the aerostat down and kept it safe. They did not do it. But uh, they ignored the warning and because of that, there was a loss of $8.8 .8 million. But another big accident took place in 2015 in uh, Pennsylvania 
there is a place called as Aberdeen Proving Ground, which is an area where the US Department of Defense, I think, they test various uh, systems. It's a proving ground. So there, there was an accident of a Jalen's aerostat. Uh, the tether got ruptured. Uh, many, many issues contributed to this particular uh, problem. The loss was huge. It was $175 million. So this is not something that is an academician's imagination. This is a live problem which everybody is facing. There are devices available today because as I mentioned to you, it's a requirement by law. Technically, legally speaking, you cannot deploy a system like this outside without any safety device. There is a, there is a law, but many people don't follow the law. In all these cases, the law was followed, but unfortunately, it was not uh, able to recover and there was a huge damage. Here is a photograph of the uh, Sierra Vista breakaway aerostat in 2011. These are uh, TV grads of the news. You can see huge white envelope lying on the middle of the road. Uh, one envelope portion also fell over a car. Okay. Then here is a picture of a breakaway aerostat in 2015. You can see in the remote countryside, uh, you know, there was this uh, aerostat that broke away. And uh, it's a very interesting picture. It shows a very old fashioned cart, horse driven cart. And it shows one aerostat envelope with the tail ruptured. And the whole aerostat is at an angle. And you know, it is completely out of control. This is another example. So these are practical incidents that took place. Now, uh, nearer to home in Singapore, there was a proposal in 2015 16 to deploy an aerostat system purchased from the US from a company called TCOM, which is the lead agency in the world in making uh, aerostat systems. They wanted to deploy in Singapore one aerostat system for local surveillance. But because there were so many incidents, especially the one in 2015, they had to rethink and the whole program got delayed. So this article talks about that the system, the, there is still a lot of tests going on. The military blimp has been delayed because people are worried about the safety concerns. So it's a real life problem. It's not just something that we are looking at from top of our head. So to sort out this particular issue and to give students a very challenging competition, real life problem, we have uh, announced a competition for ERDD. <coughs> which will take place uh, in IIT Bombay very soon. Uh, the main problem statement is as follows. First of all, we would like to have a system that will not damage the envelope. Because we already have a system that can bring the airstat or airship down with the envelope damaged, but that is not acceptable. So we are looking for a solution that does not damage the envelope. It makes everything reusable. Then we would like to have control descent rate and low impact of payload. So we will mount a small fragile payload below the aerostat and we don't want it to break. So it's not good enough for you to simply uh, open a valve and permanently and just leak all the gas. No, we need to have something that opens, closes, opens, closes, or there is a control on the rate of descent so that the aerostat comes down slowly. In between, there is a question by Prachi. Do ATC have any safety regulations implemented currently for operation of airships or installing an aerostat or is there any work going on regarding this? So Prachi, there is a legal requirement to inform the air traffic control authorities if you are operating in controlled airspace where the jurisdiction of the airspace is with the ATC, then you definitely have to inform and take prior approval. Whenever we have deployed any outdoor aerostats or taken uh, or flown airships outside, we have taken the approval of the local authorities. So, for example, when we flew an airship in Manali, that area was under the control of the defense agency, so we took their approval. In fact, the DRDO agencies were directly working with us. Similarly, we have flown airships in Pune in a place called Hadapsar, where there is a gliding center. So, Hadapsar gliding center is an area which has been cleared or approved by DGCA for deployment of aircraft and other uh, flying systems. So that whole airspace is already approved for uh, 
trial flights and commercial uh, aviation because glider launches take place. We also went to a place in Ahmedabad, uh, sorry, Aurangabad, uh, I'm sorry, Ahmednagar, <coughs> where we have flown uh, an aerostat, deployed an aerostat. Again, that area was cleared by the regulatory bodies for uh, flights of vehicles or aircraft. We did one deployment in Dehradun. So there we were actually locating our aerostat below the flight path of the prime for the chief minister's helicopter route. And therefore we had to involve the local ATC for that. So we take permission from the regional executive director of the airport authority of India under whose jurisdiction that airspace comes. So yes, to answer your question very, very specifically, yes, there are safety regulations and we have to inform the ATC and we have to take them into confidence. Okay, <laughs> going ahead. We want this system to work in two modes. One mode will be that it should be automatic. It should detect autonomously and it should uh, deflect. Uh, Akhileshwar has a question, but then he has already retracted the question. Before I could read the question, he has deleted the question. So Akhileshwar, I cannot answer your question. Type it again, please. So there are two modes of operation that we are looking for. One mode is automatic mode, where the system itself will detect that tether is broken. And it is broken for a long time, so that it's not a momentarily jerk because of any air. And uh, it should then automatically operate. And the second one is when anybody from the ground is commanding the system to operate because the, the person who uh, is the operations commander, whatever name you want to give, in charge of operations, he or she feels that uh, it's a very dangerous situation and the breakage of a tether is imminent. So we don't want to come to that stage. We want to deflate the balloon when we finish, when we feel we want to bring it down. Also, at the completion of the work, you have to deflate the gas, pack the, pack the balloon back, and then transport it back to where you came from. It would be ideal and preferable if the gas can be pushed back in the cylinder to save the costs. However, such a compressor is very expensive. We have one compressor in our lab, which can compress helium back from a balloon to a cylinder. But we have seen two things. One is that the gas does not re retain the purity level that you had. Some amount of air somehow gets into the system. And secondly, it is very, very expensive. A compressor like that is very, very expensive. However, it can be used. Okay. So we want two modes of operation, autonomous and remotely controlled or remotely commanded. Now, there are some constraints which we have imposed because it's a competition. We are supposed to provide the helium and helium is very, very expensive today. So we want the envelope to be restricted to only 1.5 cubic meters. And as you all know, you are all now budding LTA engineers. You already know from the uh, slides that you have seen and the images, the video that you have seen on uh, <coughs> estimation of static lift. You know that roughly, roughly one cubic meter of helium roughly gives you one kilogram of gross lift, okay, uh, no, sorry, net lift, not gross lift, net lift. And therefore, if I give you 1.5 cubic meters, the net force you will get will be 1.5 kg approximately. And I want to have a tension of around 200 grams in the tether. So the envelope and the ERDD should weigh only 1.3 kg or less. So we will uh, request to uh, the teams to make some simple pillow shaped envelope of volume maximum 1.5 cubic meters, because we will supply helium only this much to each team for the filling. We want the tension in the tether to be at least 0.2 kilogram force or 200 grams. The balloon, the aerostat envelope has to, after the tether is cut, it should rise and within 16 meter altitude, which it should, uh, the device should operate and bring it down. This is the, re this is the reason for this is we are going to do the competition in the indoor foyer. We don't want to go outdoor. So in an indoor fire, we have a maximum height of around 65 feet, which turned out to be 16 meters. And also to ensure that we don't waste the gas, we are going to first check that the envelope is leak proof. So we are going to tell each team, you fill the envelope and keep it overnight. Next day morning, if there is a leakage, which is massive, 
if you lose substantial uh, lifting capacity, we are going to disqualify the team because we don't want to waste the helium. So these are the constraints, and these are the timelines for the project. Out of out of these timelines, as you will notice, the problem statement release and the registration is over. And uh, another three days from now, we are going to have the deadline for the design report submission. So our our uh, our plan is that we will request. There are around 30 teams which have registered for this competition. We are going to tell them to give us their concept report by 18th. That report will be evaluated by a panel of experts, and then design which seem very promising and worth to continue. They will be shortlisted for the stage two. That will happen by the end of this month, and then they will have approximately uh, approximately three months for uh, fabricating and testing their device. The competition is going to be held in IIT Bombay on 20th and 21st of May. We are also trying to arrange a workshop on a uh, training program on some softwares on 19th of May so that when students come to IIT Bombay, they also learn something new. We are in negotiation right now with one of the software vendors who have done a workshop last year for us, which was a very successful workshop. So around 45 to 50 students will be uh, able to register for, an on, for, a, for a workshop. It will be a practical face-to-face -face workshop in which the, the team is going to teach about how to use a particular software or softwares. So that will be announced on our web page. This will be followed by the competition. On 20th, we will have the initial round and on 21st, we will have the final round. So why am I telling you all these things? Because even if you have not taken part in the competition for whatever reason, you uh, you are welcome to attend the competition. You are welcome to come. And uh, we are trying to arrange a competition in IIT Bombay hostels for outstation participants. And even if you are not taking part, it will be fun to have you for the workshop and for witnessing the event. Since you are interested in LTS systems, I am sure you would like to know about the competition. Akhileshwar Munshi has a question. Can we use air balloon for control deflection of the envelope? Yes, you can, but it's a very complicated system. Try it out and you will know. Okay. Uh, within the height of 16 meters, it is very difficult to actually obtain the buoyancy control with an aerostat with a balloon. But you can try. You can try it out. It's not easy because uh, balloon works on an outdoor aerostat, which is large in size because there is a slow change in the temperature and there is enough altitude available. This is an indoor system. And I am by, by all means, if you can figure out how to use balloon to do it, we have no problem. But remember, there is a weight constraint. The envelope plus the system should not weigh more than 1.3 kg. According to me, fitting all balloon fans, etc., 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 in that kg is very difficult. But still, nothing is, nothing is impossible till someone tries it out. Okay, so that is uh, all I wanted to talk to you about the ERDD competition. Now I will open the floor for any feedback or suggestions, or if you have any complaints regarding the, the topics which I have covered, the way I teach, or the way in which the teaching assistant, Mr. Navanuddin, is associating with you, you can feel free to raise any issues that you have. Okay, we are going to have three sessions like this. This is the first interaction session. There will be one session every month in which I will be available for one hour to answer any queries that you have and to interact with you. So this is the first of the three sessions. Uh, I'm opening the floor now for any advice, advice, suggestions, or for any comments that you may have. OK, but I'll go ahead. Once you get uh, this particular message, you can continue to interact with me. Uh, the next thing that I would, I would like to do is to inform you that there is something called a discussion forum in this particular course. The discussion forum allows you to interact with us, mainly with the teaching assistant, Mr. Namanuddin, but also with me through him uh, to get queries to any questions or any doubts that you may have. So I'm told that 
there are some students who are using this forum very very effectively and asking questions but i am also told that many students don't even know about it or they may not be able to appreciate what is the importance so watching the videos and answering the assignments or giving the examination is only one important one thing for after of the course since we are looking at technology enhanced learning it is very important that you interact with us through the discussion forum ask question and answers when you ask questions in discussion forum everybody else also benefits because the discussion forum allows interaction so naman has already mentioned on the chat window that if you when you watch the lectures on swayam portal there is a tab which says ask a question when you watch a video some question comes to your mind feel free to ask questions when you ask questions to us we know what you are thinking and if there are some shortcomings if there are some mistakes we will try to improve them okay so that is what i wanted to tell you uh, the teaching assistant uh, is quite uh, active and he is very knowledgeable because he has been assisting me in running this course for the last few years so he is now uh, quite a champion in answering the queries that you may have but still if there is something that he can't handle he always consults me and we are very happy to help you okay so now we are open for any queries we have about 10 minutes time remaining in this 10 minutes i will take any question for you please note that the facility of asking questions is available only on the swayam portal and not on the youtube so when you watch the video on youtube you will not be able to ask questions when you watch uh, when you watch it on the swayam portal you can ask the questions so in the next about 9 minutes i will be talking less and waiting for you to ask questions thank you so much for being so patient with me and to attend today's session let me see if you have any queries Raji has a question about feasibility. I think an issue in operation of airships. How much my thinking is valid in terms of mooring or deflating when under? Yes, Raji, you are right. Every system that uh, you operate for transportation has its own issues and problems. Trains have their own issues. Aircraft have their own issues. Airships also have their own issues. What are the main issues? Airships are not all weather vehicles, so therefore they can operate only in fair weather conditions. especially when there is a huge change in the wind direction and magnitude it is better not to operate them almost all of the airship accidents have taken place only in bad weather conditions almost all so when the weather conditions are not permitting the best thing to do with the airship is to tie it down or to put it inside a hangar and lock it when weather uh, when weather is permitting we should use the airship to fly So yes, you need a hangar, you need a mast, and you need the support infrastructure. Also, there are not many people available as airship pilots. It's a very unique and a special field. There are very few pilots available all over the world to fly airships. But commercial pilots can be, or uh, uh, private pilots can be easily converted into airship pilots by training. And there are agencies available who are ready to train. So I am going to keep quiet now, waiting for the questions.
And no one is giving you the time remaining in the background just to, <laughs> sorry, urge you. So by the way, these sessions have been created by Edbitel essentially for interaction with the students. They are not meant for me giving a lecture to you. However, our experience is that not many students bother to ask questions. So we are available. It's up to you. Kabil Sharma has asked a question. Can we discuss ways to purify LTA gas in deployed LTA systems? Yes, uh, Kapil, there are certain devices available using what is called as a molecular sleeve, where you have a pipe that collects the gas from the envelope, makes it go through a molecular sieve, which filters out anything other than the helium or hydrogen, and then it pumps back that particular gas in the envelope through another pipe. These systems are commercially available and over about eight to 10 hours time, they are able to do 8,000 cubic uh, meters purification. I have seen one such system deployed when I visited the factory of Zeppelin in Germany in Friedrichshafen. Uh, at that time, I, I saw one commercial system being deployed, okay, long ago. Uh, so these are the ways in which you can purify the gas inside the envelope. We have actually done some studies in this area. We have published one paper on various techniques for gas purification. If you send a message to us in the discussion forum, I will request Norman to share that paper. It's an AIAA conference paper presented by a student in 2017. He was a student of IIT Bombay who did that study over one semester. I'll be happy to share with you. And there was another student who worked with me from NTU Singapore. So, I think jointly they have written this paper in 2017. I will be happy to share with you. Uh, Akhileshwar Munshi has a question. Can you please explain in short what is super pressure? Super pressure basically is nothing but pressure inside the envelope, which is more than the pressure outside. That's all. The word super basically just tells you that the pressure is more than ambient. That's the only meaning. So if I say that there is a super pressure of 200 uh, Newton per meter square, it means that the pressure inside is 200 more than outside. Okay, so that is the super pressure. Now, super pressure and super heat are two concepts which are explained in the <coughs> in the slides also. Super heat basically means when you heat the when you deploy the LTO system for long times in the ambient atmosphere, because of the natural heating of the sun, the gas will get hot over a period of time because of the, first of all, the envelope will get heated and that heat will be transmitted. There will be heat transfer and that will heat the gas. Now, when you heat the gas, as you know, its density will decrease. So because of that, there will be higher pressure. So that, uh, and also there will be a change in the lift. So uh, that, effect is called as the effect of superheat. Super pressure basically is, as I said, the 
delta p between the pressure inside and the pressure outside is called super pressure so if i say we have a zero pressure balloon it means that the pressure of the gas inside is equal to the pressure of the gas outside that is called as that is called as a zero pressure balloon but if i fill if i fill gas inside and give high pressure and close the envelope i will get a super pressure balloon so if the pressure inside is more than outside the balloon has super pressure that's all so akhileshwar such questions can easily be asked in the discussion forum also so that as you read or as you watch the videos you get a clarity on those points all right friends so it's 6 o'clock in the evening here in iit bombay i am right now in the nptel recording studio and uh, it's time for me to take your leave because we have booked this only for 1 hour from 5 to 6 and i don't want to keep the people waiting so thank you so much i big round of thanks for my teaching assistant who has been very very efficient and very in very you know passionate in taking care of all the queries so actually sir yes we keep the gas pressure inside the envelope more than outside even in normal conditions because we don't want to have a situation that the envelope shape should get distorted when you fly an airship at a reasonable speed in the atmosphere there will be a dynamic pressure of half into rho into v square acting in the nose and that can crumple the nose inside right that can crumple the nose inside so to ensure that doesn't happen the delta p or the pressure is at least half rho v square or more so typically you will find 300 to 500 sometimes even 800 newton per meter square pressure inside more than outside so thanks a lot ranju swami for your uh, positive comments thanks prachi for uh, <clears throat> talking about buoyancy applications great to have all of you and we are going to stop the meeting now thank you so much